Unfortunately, you know, the Academy of Nutrition, which is the governing board of all dietitians, is heavily sponsored by processed foods. Like, I've known that since I became a dietitian. Like, I refuse to be a member of the Academy of Nutrition. Um, you don't have to be a member to be a dietitian um, since I became a dietitian. Because even when I followed a high carbohydrate diet, I'm like, there's no way this is not a conflict of interest. You know, when I graduated, their top two sponsors were Coca Cola, PepsiCo, and Frito Lay. And today, it's, I believe it's like General Mills, Frito Lay, Abbott is a big one. Abbott makes it sure. And so when you have these very large companies, um, sponsoring you. And we just had a study um, that was released in, well, in the New York Times that said, not only are they sponsored by these companies, meaning they you know, they get money from these companies, they are investing in these company stocks. And I was like, how is, how is every dietitian not losing their mind? You know? And so it comes back to, you know, I remember arguing with an older dietitian about this in 2015 um, and her being like, well, it's not like you're going to ever walk into a patient's room and be like, Hey, have a Coca-Cola. It's good for you. And that's true. That's not what they're buying. You know, no dietitian is going to go in unless you're on palliative care, you're, you know, whatever at that point, you <laughs> got a few weeks, I don't care what you do. Um, but in general, nobody's going to go into a, um, patient's room and like recommend, you know, a Coca-Cola, but what they're buying what all these process companies, and it's so brilliant uh, from a marketing standpoint, you know, if you have no soul, that when a patient says like, hey, is it all right if I have a Coca-Cola, you know, in moderation, or if I have one every day, every other day? Oh, yeah, sure. Just have it in moderation. And it's, it's brilliant. You know, it's a great way to keep people sick, because moderation has no definition. Ask 10 different people, is it once a day, once a year, twice a day, six times a day, once a week? Nobody knows. And we've also, you know, all these companies that are sponsoring dietitians, the cereals, cookies, crackers, pasta, you know, these products are engineered, not only to override your body's ability to stop eating, they're to override your brain's ability to stop eating. It's pretty brilliant. So, and it's very, I mean, it's literally someone's full-time job to like, how can I keep you (laughs) coming back? It's amazing. So why are they so... Why are they so um, slow to change? Because if you said like, look, you guys, we can, we can restore, nobody should have type two diabetes. Like truly nobody should have that. We can reverse that. We can make you more um, sensitive to insulin to your, your cells to insulin within two weeks on a low carb diet. We've got very, very good clinical trials on this, especially for ketogenic diets, low carb, um, ketogenic, even just low carb diets, type two diabetes, so much research on this. Um, so for, for dietitians to change, you're going to lose all your money. <laughs> it's all about money. If you could heal people, like if there were, if you could monetize healing people, every single, our, our medical system would look, look entirely different. Um, so that's, that's one reason. One, it's money. And two, I think there's also, I talked about a little bit earlier about humility. It is very hard for people who've been practicing for 30 years, 40 years to say, I was wrong. The advice I gave hurt people. The advice I gave might have actually killed people. Like that's a really hard thing for people to come to terms with. You know, it's called cognitive dissonance. So you've got those two things working together. And then you've got a lot of, um, you know, most dietitians that come into the internship, mostly women, a lot of young, skinny white girls. And like, I'm saying this as a, you know, lean white female, um, that it's, well, if I can eat this way, why can't you eat this way? You know, <laughs> and obviously, you know, gen- things tend to catch up with you as your life and hormones and metabolism shifts. So, so there's, there's a lot of things working against it, but I would certainly say the number one thing is just, there's just so much money. There's so much money. I mean, I think we all know that on like a baseline level, but having worked in the hospital setting, like there is a profound amount of money in keeping people sick. 